Greetings. Today I'm back with five tofu recipes that I'm currently obsessed with. Tofu is my favorite plant protein source by far, and there's so many fun ways to cook and enjoy it. So I hope this video is helpful and that you love these recipes as much as I do. Kicking this video off, one of my current favorite ways to use tofu is to make an alternative to spicy crab salad for sushi. I love using this in vegan California rolls specifically. And I'm using the super firm high protein tofu for this because if there's an excess of liquid in your spicy tofu salad, you end up with soggy sushi. So if you wanna substitute in extra firm tofu, you can, but just make sure you press it really, really thoroughly. And I'm actually only using three of the five servings in this block because it makes a lot. I'm using a cheese grater for this, but you can also crumble it or finely chop it. The reason I like grating it is because I find that the salad holds together better in my rolls using these longer shreds. Add the shredded tofu to a big mixing bowl. As far as other ingredients go, I do add a few tablespoons of finely grated carrot. This is mostly for color, so it looks like that classic imitation crab, but it also adds a nice little sweetness to the mix. I also finally sliced some scallions. By the end of this video, I'm sure you will be well aware of the insane volume of scallions we go through. I just love them so much, I put them on everything. So we're basically just tossing these ingredients together in a spicy sriracha mayo. Still not able to find the OG brand of sriracha anywhere near me. We are using the Roland brand right now. I found this at Target. To be honest, it is not my favorite, but it works for this application. And I also add some soy sauce to boost the umami and some rice vinegar to balance everything out with a little tartness. Then all that remains is to prep your other sushi roll or sushi bowl ingredients. I love the sushi rice recipe from the Just One Cookbook blog, so here I'm preparing that. Properly seasoned sushi rice is key to sushi that tastes restaurant caliber, so don't skimp on that seasoned rice vinegar. And then of course I also prepped some fresh cucumber and avocado and now it's time to roll our sushi. And investing in a sushi rolling mat definitely helps you to get nice rolls. And since California rolls are traditionally rolled with the rice on the outside, I wanted to try my hand at that. I had seen the tip to wrap your sushi mat in plastic wrap or put it in a ziplock to prevent the rice from sticking. But honestly, this didn't work very well for me and my first attempt came out really messy. The second time around, I just used the sushi mat as normal and I had no issues with sticking at all. I was actually super proud of how these came out. I had never really had success with the rice on the outside, but I just thought they were so cute. Let me know if you'd be interested in another video featuring more recipes for vegan sushi night. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I'm taking a quick pause to thank our sponsor today, AG1. AG1 is a daily nutritional drink that contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and high quality whole foods sourced ingredients. You just add one scoop to eight to 12 ounces of water every day, and it's a great quick and convenient way to fill in any nutritional gaps. AG1 is great for all sorts of lifestyles and activity levels. So as someone who strength trains several times a week, I really love having that extra nutrition just to help improve my recovery after exercise. AG1 also contains a blend of pre and probiotics and enzymes to help improve digestion, optimize gut health, and in turn support immune health. Also, I just gotta say, if you're curious about the flavor, I was honestly a little scared before I tried it because I could be quite picky and I have gone through my fair share of supplements that I literally could not even swallow. But I can honestly, honestly say AG1 has a really mild flavor. I don't mind it at all. I find it quite easy to drink. It's not like grassy or bitter. It, to me, it kind of just tastes like pineapple with a little hint of vanilla, a little bit of sweetness. And yeah, I like it. So if the flavor is something that you are concerned about, I can vouch for it as someone who's very picky and sensitive to those kinds of things. The journey to better health really is just all about gradually establishing sustainable routines in terms of movement, better sleep, or nutrition. So taking one minute every morning to drink AG1 is just a quick and convenient way to start the day off knowing I'm doing something good for my body. You can click my link in the description to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs of AG1 for free with your first purchase. Thank you again to AG1 for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to our tofu recipes. Next, I'm making my 10 minute garlic chili silken tofu. This recipe is my current obsession because it's so quick and easy, but it's super flavorful. So it's great for those nights when you don't really wanna cook, but you want something savory and satisfying. 
You can use either silken tofu or soft tofu for this recipe, either will work. I'm gonna show you two different ways to serve it, but the first is to drain your tofu and then transfer it to a plate with a clean kitchen towel to let it absorb the extra moisture while you prep your ingredients. As far as fresh ingredients, all we need are a few scallions and a few cloves of garlic. And just like with the tofu lettuce wraps, you can kind of add as much or as little as you like. The recipe is super flexible. And I keep the white and the green parts of the scallions separate. Then you can transfer your tofu to a plate and slice it to roughly one half inch pieces. This is the easiest way to serve the tofu, but actually my favorite way to cut the tofu for this recipe is with a crosshatch pattern. This is inspired by the chrysanthemum tofu that I've seen on TikTok, but it's fewer cuts, so it's not as tedious, and it just creates all sorts of little nooks and crannies that really allow the chili garlic sauce to sink in so you get it in every single bite. To make that chili garlic sauce, all I do is add soy sauce, brown sugar, rice vinegar, chili crisp, and the garlic and the white parts of the scallions to a little skillet or pot. I bring that to a gentle simmer and let it cook for just a few minutes. You're basically looking for the sugar to dissolve and for the mixture to start to thicken just slightly. At that point, I add in the green parts of my scallions and I reserve just a few to use as a topping. Then you can pour that sauce directly over your silken tofu and you have a few options. You can actually leave the tofu cold if you don't mind that. It's actually quite refreshing on a hot summer day. You could also just pop the tofu in the microwave for one to two minutes or you can steam it on the plate using a steaming rack for about five minutes. My favorite way to heat my tofu is actually to kind of poach it. So I bring a little pot of water to a boil, just enough to cover the block of tofu. Lower the heat, add my tofu in, and I just let it sit in there and heat up while I'm making the sauce. Then when it's ready to serve, I use a spider to fish it out and let it drain for a minute. If you choose to cook it this way, it does retain extra liquid, but personally, I kind of like it because the extra water mixes with the chili soy sauce and it makes a really light savory broth that goes really well with steamed rice, which is what I almost always serve this dish with. So it makes it a little bit saucier, but it's totally up to you if you prefer the dish to be less brothy, just serve it cold or heat it up in the microwave or steam it. Next up, we are revisiting my tofu lettuce wraps, and I've featured these in a few videos now just because they really are a favorite in our household, especially during the summer. They just come together so quickly and they're really fresh. I like to use firm or extra firm tofu, and you don't have to press it, but I recommend it because it makes it easier to brown the tofu. This recipe is built on aromatic veggies, so we're gonna mince up lots of fresh garlic, ginger, scallions, and onion. And this is a great recipe for new cooks because it's quite flexible and it's a great way to kind of hone your cooking intuition so you can just dice up as much of these ingredients as you like. I'm of the opinion that there's no such thing as too much garlic so I mince up a lot. And then here I'm dicing up a can of water chestnuts. I'm obsessed with these, they add the most satisfying crunch to the tofu filling. A technique you'll see me use a few times in this video is to give the tofu a preliminary pan fry on its own to brown it up and to give it a nice kind of extra chew. And this is also cooking out more of the extra water in the tofu to firm it up. I know a common complaint about tofu is that it's too mushy. So if that's something that kind of puts you off of loving tofu, taking this extra step in addition to giving it a good press can really transform the texture. Once I've browned the tofu, I remove it to a bowl and in the same skillet or wok, I stir fry my onions for a minute or two until they're translucent. Then in go my garlic, onion, and the white parts of my green onions and those get another minute or two until they're very fragrant. And turn down the heat if you need to, to prevent your garlic from taking on too much color. Now I add back in my brown tofu along with the chopped water chestnuts and my seasonings. So I use either vegan oyster sauce and you can find this at a lot of Asian markets. It's generally made out of mushrooms so it really contributes that umami. Or you can also use hoisin sauce but that tends to be a little bit sweeter. That's what I'm using in this video. Then you'll add in soy sauce and some sriracha or sambal chili paste if you like. Stir fry that through and the tofu really soaks up all that flavor because we've done such a good job already of cooking out all the excess liquid. And then I like to add in the green parts of the green onions and just stir fry that for about a minute. Serve the filling in little lettuce boats. I usually use iceberg or butter lettuce. And this time around, I also wanted to try making my own crispy rice noodles as a fun topper. I've never done this before, but you literally just fry rice noodles for like a few seconds. It happens super quickly and it's quite satisfying. 
Next up, here's a recipe I've been making a ton lately because I love chipotle sofritas. Every summer I get obsessed with chipotle. I crave their burritos all the time, but I just don't love spending $12 on a burrito. So I had to figure out how to make it myself. For this recipe, I like to use super firm high protein tofu. And yeah, you can tell that I'm just a little bit obsessed with grating my tofu nowadays. I just really love the texture. It exposes a lot of surface area, which can then be browned really nicely to improve the texture. But you can absolutely just crumble it if that's easier for you. Earlier, I had diced up some white onion and I prefer making this recipe with poblano peppers when I can find them, but my store was out on this day. So I just used green bell pepper. But the poblano adds a really nice, special kind of earthy flavor that I love. Then of course we've got lots of minced garlic. And I dice up a few fresh Roma tomatoes. Lately I've just preferred using fresh ingredients whenever possible, but you can always use canned diced tomatoes to cut down on some prep time. And the last thing we need is a few chipotle peppers, the kind that come in a can with adobo sauce. These can be quite spicy, so if you don't enjoy spice, you might want to use something like smoked paprika or powdered chipotle pepper instead. Just like with the lettuce wraps, I'm going ahead and browning just the tofu ahead of time to give it a nice chew. This step is optional if you're on a time crunch, but it really helps to avoid a mushy texture later. Then I set the brown tofu off to the side, and in the same pan I saute my onion until it's translucent. Then in go the green pepper and the garlic. A tip I have is to season your ingredients with salt as you go rather than waiting to the very end. There are a few exceptions where salt can interfere with the cooking process, but usually it just creates a more flavorful dish. Once the garlic is fragrant, I add in my fresh tomatoes and the chipotle peppers, along with a few tablespoons of that adobo sauce from the can. Then I season with cumin, paprika, and oregano. And once the tomatoes start to break down and turn almost a little jammy, then I add back in my browned tofu along with some water. I give everything a good stir and then I let this simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. And this is just giving all the vegetables an opportunity to stew and soften up and allowing all the flavors to blend. Once the extra water has cooked back off, it's ready to enjoy. My current favorite way to enjoy our homemade sofritas has been on tostadas. We brush corn tortillas with a little bit of olive oil and bake them until they're crispy. And then I pile those with sofritas, homemade cashew sour cream to balance out the spice, and some shredded lettuce. I also like making burritos with sofritas, and I'll usually add some vegan cheese and beans in when I make those. Here we have a vegan version of egg salad using tofu. This recipe is a staple for me and it's very nostalgic because I grew up loving egg salad sandwiches and this version 100% hits the spot. I use a block of firm or extra firm tofu and I highly recommend taking the time to press it to avoid a really soggy and overly wet tofu egg salad. I absolutely love this tofu press by the way. It works super quickly and I just let it go to work while I prep my other ingredients. Those include celery, one or two stalks finely diced just depending on how much crunch you like in your salad. I also add in thinly sliced scallion, but you can also use diced red or white onion. And if you're a bit sensitive to the raw onion flavor, a helpful tip is to soak your diced onion in ice water for about 10 minutes to remove some of that bite. I also love the flavor of dill in my tofu egg salad, so I'll either use a few tablespoons of fresh dill or a teaspoon or two of dried dill. Now that my tofu's been pressed, I slice off about a third of that block and I set it aside for a moment. And then I chop up that remaining two thirds of the block roughly and this is gonna kind of resemble the texture of chopped hard boiled egg whites. Then I take that remaining one third block of tofu, I put it in my mixing bowl and I mash it along with my vegan mayonnaise and Dijon mustard. And a little side note, follow your heart, veganaise is the only kind of vegan mayo that I personally like. I'm just not a fan of the Hellman's or the best foods. I used to love the Just Mayo, but they kind of disappeared and I haven't seen any of their products in years and I never really investigated why that was. I also add in some black salt, which is a key ingredient if you want that authentic eggy flavor. You can also add up to a quarter teaspoon of turmeric for a little bit of color. It's optional, but it can visually contribute to that nostalgic factor if you like. So I mash up these ingredients to make a dressing and mashing some of the tofu definitely improves the texture of the salad in my opinion. In the past, when I have just chopped up all the tofu, I get a lot of the little tofu pieces falling out of my sandwiches, but the mashed tofu makes it all a bit more cohesive. Now I add in the remaining ingredients and this is where I just give it a taste and adjust to my preference. 
Some other fun add-ins are nutritional yeast, a tablespoon or two if you have it. Sometimes I like adding some chopped pickles or pickle relish if I want it to be a little extra zippy or a squeeze of lemon juice. Some smoked paprika is also really nice. It kind of gives it that deviled egg flavor. And I love serving this on squishy white bread. It just brings me back to my childhood lunch sandwiches. Again, that nostalgia factor is big for me. All right, those are the five tofu recipes that I currently cannot live without. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, check the description box for links to the full written recipes on my blog, sarahsvegankitchen.com. Also, I have made several videos about tofu over the years, so if you're craving more ideas, check out my tofu playlist. Subscribe for more plant-based recipes, and I will see you very soon. Bye!